So what next for Vijay Malia? Will a non-bailable warrant be enough to bring him back to India? What are his options? Joining us now to discuss all of that, two senior lawyers, Satish Manshinde and Sanjay Ashu. Gentlemen, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Uh, Mr. Manshinde, let me start by asking you, uh, was this expected? Because the fact is that the ED had already sent three summons to Vijay Malia. He hadn't responded. The ED claims he wasn't cooperating. Was this verdict or order really expected in that sense, given the fact that after three summons, a non-bailable warrant is most likely well uh, the first of all the fact that uh, Vijay Malaya did not respond to respond to those three summonses is obvious because uh, when he left India he did not live as a fugitive mm. and he has always been saying that he'll need time to come back to India probably because he's making arrangements for uh, paying up the banks he, through his lawyers, had made an offer in the Supreme Court that his company was willing to pay about 4,000 crores, but the banks had not accepted it. Uh, the courts uh, uh, had uh, asked uh, his counsel to inform as to when he would be available in India. Obviously, the Supreme Court was seized of the matter. In the meanwhile, the Enforcement Directorate mm took upon itself of issuing those summonses to Vijay Malia mm. repeatedly, which is unheard of uh, by the Enforcement Directorate, obviously because there must have been some pressure from corners, which I, I, I wouldn't know. Okay. But the finance minister has said that uh, the business model of Vijay Malia obviously may have gone wrong. Mm. And uh, the RBI governor had said that uh, we will leave no stones unturned to recover these monies. Right. Now, the amount that was lent to Vijay Malaya was about 7,000 crores. Mm. He had given uh, 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 security of about We are aware crores. of the background of the case, Mr. Manchinde. Securities are lying in No, we are aware of the background of the case. So would you then, if I were to read between the lines of what you're saying, are you suggesting that in a sense, uh, the action of the enforcement directed when this matter is already being heard by the Supreme Court is unusual? It's unusual and it's high-handed. There are uh, the, the course left to Vijay Malaya is to either come back to India and appear before the court, and if if and when he appears, uh, I can assure you that with what has been happening in our courts, mm. he is going to be straight away sent to custody. Okay. And that's what uh, somebody like Vijay Malaya would not want to face. Mm. So uh, you you had a non-bailable warrant against uh, Lalit Modi. Yeah. Who is sitting in London? Mm comfortably and with a with a valid uh, permit to stay in London mm. so also is Vijay Malia and obviously Vijay Malia is going to take certain actions mm. which are going to be embarrassing to the government of India and uh, to the business community as a whole okay let, let me so let I me don't know what the government of India uh, is trying to do uh, in this matter uh, uh, let me let me uh, first get Sanjay okay, Asher okay to respond to the comments that you've made Mr. Manchinde and then come back to you Sanjay Asher would you agree that there is now no choice left before Vijay Malia but to return to India uh, not just because of the non-bailable warrant that's been issued but also because the Ministry of External Affairs has suspended Vijay Malia's passport and has given given him a week's time to respond and justify why it shouldn't be revoked unilaterally. So is there any choice now before Vijay Malia but to return? No, I would say that Vijay Malia did have a mechanism whereby he could have participated through the video conferencing mechanism uh, on the summons issued by the ED. I don't know the exact facts as to why he did not or his lawyers did not try to uh, reply to the summons hmm. or to appear before the ED through the mechanism of video conferencing after taking requisite approvals from the High Court. Okay. But I agree with Mr. Satish Manchin Day that the moment he appears and he comes into the country, he would be immediately taken into custody. Hmm. Three, no court is going to give him relief to say that, look, uh, since the bank monies are outstanding, mm. that you can't take him into custody. And so, therefore, now that there is a proposition of cancelling or revoking his passport mm. and other steps which have been taken, uh, perhaps it could be late in the day whereby he could yet 
participate through the video conferencing mechanism. Mm. But I but think you're, that you're, particular you're, option, you're basically lawyers saying or that advisors would have definitely tried. You're basically saying that he's left now with limited legal recourse, and if Malia were to enter India, he will be behind bars. Yes, uh, the chances are very, very likely that uh, he would be taken into custody, considering the facts and circumstances under which uh, all the courts are uh, have passed the orders till date. Uh, uh, Satish Manchin, and especially when he's been issued right. summons three times and a warrant has been issued. Right. Satish Manchinde, uh, how is this likely to now also impact the proceedings that are currently underway in the Supreme Court? Because the, because the Supreme Court is hearing a matter where Vijay Malia is trying to settle with banks. There have been video conferencing uh, engagements between Malia and the Bankers Consortium. How is this issuance of the non-bailable warrant, the possible revocation of his passport by the Ministry of External Affairs, impact the proceedings in the Supreme Court? You see, the Union of India is a party before the Honorable Supreme Court. The banks are represented. The, the senior most law officers are appearing for the government of India. And in such a situation, I think uh, the ED ought to have been well advised not to jump the gun and uh, go to the court and get a non available warrant issued. Mm. But particularly when the Supreme Court is seized of the matter, mm. and he has appeared in the Supreme Court through his lawyers, mm. I don't see any reason why the enforcement directorate has jumped the gun. I don't say that they are, they are not uh, authorized or to take up uh, you know, actions as they deem fit. Mm. But in this situation, I think they have, uh, they, they have been in a great hurry, which normally does not happen in most of the cases. So if you and were advising Mr. Malia, Malia today, with, so Satish think, Manchinde, uh, if you were advising a, Mr. Malia they, today, they what would your legal strategy be? Would you move the Supreme Court? Well, I would first, I would, I would first tell him to settle with the banks. He has offered 4,000 4, crores, and the banks are claiming 9,000 crores. His original sum that he had uh, derived from the banks was about 7,000 crores. I would tell him to up his uh, offer to the banks, pay up the banks, because it is not unheard of that banks earlier in our country have settled for 50% 50, 50 of the claim or even less than 50% of the claim. Malay has offered 4,000 crores, which is uh, more than 50,000 of the original uh, loans that he had borrowed. It's possible that he can deal with the banks offer a settlement okay. which is much higher and more acceptable because he he's uh, he, he he has been written off mm. a, as a non performing asset sure. and if he is willing to pay up i am sure the courts also would take a lenient view mm. and not send him to jail okay and, so sanjay uh, asher let me let me get you to uh, comment on this and end the discussion would you agree with satish manshinde that the courts will take a lenient view if malia were to arrive at an amicable settlement with the Bankers Consortium as part of the Supreme Court hearings that are currently underway? Yeah, I would agree with Mr. Satish Manchinde that he has to show his bona fide to uh, settle the with the banks at whatever percentage, 50%, less than 50%, more than 50%. If not, at least pay some money to the bank, namely 3 4,000 crores, whatever, he undertaking is given to the Supreme Court and then uh, uh, taken uh, some order from the Supreme Court to say that look the balance amount he will arrive at a settlement but please don't arrest him or please don't take him into custody he will cooperate in whatever manner is required mm. so that at least the fear of getting arrested or uh, being put into custody is avoided. So okay. the important thing is, yes, A, he has to show his bona fide and mm. offer 3 4,000 crores, whatever the number is, and B, then take an order from the Supreme Court to say that, look, he would not be put into custody. Okay. All right. Well, and we'll see. the courts need we'll... to take a lenient stand in the event he shows some bona fide. 
it will now depend on uh, whether the court does decide to take a lenient view and whether or not uh, Vijay Malia can in fact cough up more than 4,000 crores because the initial offer of 4,000 crores has been rejected by the bankers consortium but uh, the tough times continue for Vijay Malia. Uh, Satish Manchinde and Sanjay Ashur appreciate you joining us here to take us through what options he could now explore. With